Hello, my name is Amanda Hill from the Archives Association of Ontario. In this short video, I'm going to explain some of the principles behind the arrangement and description of archival materials, which is a core part of what archivists do. And then I'm going to look into a little more detail at how to arrange archival materials. In another video, I'll look at description in more depth. So why are arrangement and description such key functions for archivists? First of all, in order to be able to do anything with records, we need to know what we hold and where it is. We also need to be able to make those materials available to people who might want to use them. And we need to be able to explain how those records came to be created and how they have been used. These are the definitions of arrangement and description in the Canadian Rules for Archival Description Standard. Arrangement is all about organising records, and the definition here makes it clear that this can be both a physical and an intellectual process. The definition also makes reference to accepted archival principles, and I'll go on to explain more about what those archival principles are and how they relate to arranging archival materials. These are the three main archival principles I'm going to be looking at. Provenance, original order and ease of use. In order for us to be confident about the authenticity of a particular record, we need to know that it is what it purports to be. We need to know where this document has been all its life, who created it, who has had charge of it and who has had access to it. We also need to know how this record relates to all the other records that were created by the same organisation or individual. Once a record is separated from the context of its creation or use, it loses important information about that association. Think of a stray family photograph at a flea market and how much information has been lost when we don't know where that item came from in the first place or who it represents. The second important archival principle is known as original order. This is the idea that the way in which records were maintained by their creators and by subsequent owners is vital to understanding what they were used for and how they relate to each other. In organising records, archivists generally aim to recreate the filing system used by the creator of the records as much as they can to maintain that context. Together, these two principles of provenance and original order form an overall concept known by archivists as respect des fonds. The language of the name reflects the early contributions of archivists in France to archival theory. Let's have a closer look at this word fonds. Here is a definition from the International Council on Archives which formulated a statement of principles regarding archival description published in the journal Archivaria in 1992. As you can see from this definition, a fond is really an intellectual construct. The word describes all of the records created or accumulated by a person or organisation during their active life. Some created records will always be sent elsewhere or discarded. It can be seen that there is never any such thing as a complete fond in any archival repository. What they actually hold is what remains of the fond of a particular individual or institution. Within a form, records are divided up into series. These are materials which are related to each other, sometimes by their form. For example, all the photographs in a form might be grouped into one series, or more often by their function. So perhaps all the minute books for an organisation might be arranged together with all the correspondence sorted into a separate series. Inside a series, according to the rules for archival description standard, there may be files or items. Let's have a look at an example of a font to see how this works in practice. Here is a description of the records of St Joseph's Hospital in Chatham, Ontario. This group of records is a font which has been arranged into seven separate series. You can see them listed on the left of this screenshot from Archeon. In this case, the archivist has divided the records into histories, correspondence, administrative records, newspapers and clippings, minutes, events, and photographs. If we drill down into the first series, histories, you can see that this series has been arranged into five files, each dealing with a different history of the organization. 
Some groups of archival materials have been gathered together over time rather than created by the activities of an organisation or an individual. They might all be about a particular topic, but generally they've come from different sources. In archival terminology, these are called collections rather than fonds. The records may be lacking their provenance and original order, but they can still be arranged and described in a similar way to a fonds. The third principle I want to mention here is one which gets a bit less attention in the archival literature sometimes, but which is nevertheless very important. After all, we are arranging and describing materials so that they can be used by people. Keeping potential future users of the materials in mind can help us to make sensible decisions about how records are arranged within an archive. Now I'm going to go through the various things you need to think about when you're arranging a group of records, whether it's a form or a collection. The first thing you want to do is some research on the creator, or if it's a collection, the subject of the records you want to arrange. Your institution might have information about the materials in an accession record or a file, or you may be able to find out more about the materials from the internet. If you don't have much to go on, step two can help. You need to survey the materials you want to arrange to get a sense of what there is and to see if you can detect any obvious signs of the original order they would have been held in by the creator. At this point, you can also start identifying materials which can be disposed of, duplicates for example, or items which you consider to be of low archival value. If you do discard things, it's good practice to make a note of those decisions. Once you have a sense of the fond or collection, you're in a position to physically arrange the materials. Remember that you want to maintain the original order if possible, but also be thinking about the convenience of the end user. Here's an example of a relatively small group of records to show how arrangement might work in practice. In this case, the archivist has decided to divide the materials into three set series, minute books, correspondence, and other materials. There is nearly always a miscellaneous section when it comes to archival arrangement and description. The minute books have been arranged chronologically within the series, and the correspondence has been divided into two files, one for administrative correspondence and the other one for thank you letters. With a small collection, arrangement can be a fairly quick part of the arrangement and description process. It gets more challenging with larger groups of records. This photograph shows the papers of the UK's anti-apartheid movement during the arrangement phase of that cataloguing project, which in total took over six years. While you're arranging materials, you can also be getting them ready for archival storage. Many archives have their own policies on how this is done, so you need to follow local practice. If you have a climate-controlled storage space, it's less vital to package materials in acid-free containers, but most archives do use acid-free folders and boxes to provide the best protection for their materials. Rubber bands from records, as they will decay over time and stick to the paper. Some archives remove staples and paper clips, but if you're dealing with large quantities of records, this may not be the best use of your time, especially if your storage area is climate controlled. This is a key point which can't be emphasized enough. There is no right way to arrange materials. The important thing is that you're making those materials available for people to use. If you can stick to the archival principles of provenance and original order as much as possible and consider what would make most sense to the end users of your archives, then you're doing the right thing. In summary, if you can, arrange records in a way that reflects how they were originally generated and used. If such an arrangement is not immediately clear, then think about how best to organize the materials in a way that will be logical to your end users. And remember, the Archives Association of Ontario is always there for advice if you need help with any of this. This is one of a series of videos funded by the Government of Ontario to provide online training opportunities for archivists and archives users in Ontario. Thank you for listening.